How's it going gamers? My name is Rushcode and I made some progress with our little Minecraft landscaping project. So we're going to take a look at that today. So I figured out how to make phase three, but before I went on to that, I wanted to make sure that I had the right blocks for it. So these were the current blocks that I was using, but I wanted to actually use blocks that had dirt and grass combined together just to make it look more like Minecraft. So I'd be spawning grass block one now, and when you run it, it looks like this. I suspect the way the block looks under another block has something to do with how I control the materials, but I chose not to work on that because it's not paramount to the landscaping objective. So now that phase two was properly done and ready, I could move on to phase three, where we create a flat world by spawning multiple chunks of phase two inside it. And you can see here, I'm using the special for loops that I made based on a previous video I made about how to make custom for loops. So the first thing I did was calculate the first and final chunk, which as you can see from my scribbles, this is to do with coordinating where to start and finish building all the chunks in a specific sequence using nested loops. So if I look at these here, it's just a bunch of maths which helps calculate certain things with where based on the world size, based on the chunk size. And these are these are variables that I can change anytime based on how much my computer can handle without it chugging and also allowing it to be dynamic controlled rather than changing the stuff when I want to spawn a block. For example, in phase two, I have to control all of these loops manually, but in phase three, I've set it up so that it can do it automatically. In the final chunk, it's also the same thing. Just do a, a bit of maths here and there to calculate some things, and then it knows where the final chunk is going to be. From there, it would loop through all the Y coordinates, but first it would have to do all the X coordinates followed by the Y coordinates. That's why the X coordinates are looping inside the Y loops. But you'll notice there's no loop for the Z coordinates simply because the chunks are not going to be moving vertically up and down. They are simply moving across the two dimensional plane. So when it starts to loop, the first thing I would do is calculate the first block inside the current chunk that I'm looking at, followed by the final block, which again just involves more maths and a few tricks like having the height of the chunk to determine where the top of the chunk is actually going to be. From there, I do the usual thing of creating the random array for whether I want to spawn a block or not. And then I have this extra note here, which is just going to help us see the chunk borders in a second and draw the chunk borders themselves, which is just a thin, long long cylinder that I spawned into the world, followed by actually spawning the chunk. This node over here is simply everything that I've taken from phase two and put it into a function. So it looks very similar, except for the fact that the indices for the nested loops are not manually set, but they are now controlled by the first and the final block for each chunk. Everything after that is pretty much the same. And when you spawn the block, I've already set it to spawn the second type of grass block, which involves having dirt on it. And this is what it looks like when you run the simulation. It's not much to look at right now, but this is going to be the foundation for when I start to build terrain, because all I need to do is add a few more layers to the Z coordinate. And if I wanted to make it bigger, I just need to change the chunk size or specify more chunks to be spawned into the world. So if I were to unhide the chunk borders by taking this off, we can start to see a clearer picture of where the chunks actually are. So looking at this over here, we have our first chunk from the point of origin, and I set it to be 16 by 16 blocks, and my world size to be four by four chunks. So you can see there are four chunks here, each is 16, making it out to be 64 blocks by 64 blocks in total for my current world size. And if this is the X direction, the way I set up the nested loops for the chunks is to spawn the chunks in the X direction first, followed by the y direction so it'll do all of these chunks followed by the next row of chunks followed by the next row followed by the final row and inside each chunk it would spawn all the blocks in the same sequence layer by layer as you go up in the z direction and knowing that phase four would involve making terrain i needed to test this out to see if it could work for more layers but i started to run into a performance problem because the more layers i have the more my computer starts to chug and even show tearing along the edges of the world as i move my camera i couldn't the tearing but the major issue I fixed was the chugging and that was to do with just the number of shaders that were being drawn. I don't quite fully understand how shading works but if you were to take this for example and change the view you can see how bad this is right the the white is showing just the overload of shading and computations involved and pretty much the whole thing is just red. The only bits that are green are the bits that I'm not drawing anything on at all. I spent days trying to figure out what what I did wrong here and in the end I realized that it was one simple thing which I accidentally tweaked at one point for testing purposes and it was to do with this blend mode here. I set the original material to be translucent rather than opaque. So this actually solved a lot of problems because now when I ran it you can see that the color is different because it's not translucent. It's much much easier 
easier to fly through the world. And if I were to do a shader comparison, you can see that everything's actually green this time because it's only showing what you can see on the surface. And this is to do with something called occlusion culling and culling based on the view frustum. The view frustum is this pink boundary that comes out from the camera. The idea is that if you have a block hidden behind another block and you can't see it from your viewpoint, that block will not be drawn at all. So if I were to jump into my camera actor here and then do a what is called a freeze render and then jump out of my actor, you can see that my camera is here now, but that object is currently missing. If I were to unfreeze the rendering, that block and the point of origin reappears because my current camera frustum viewpoint is not where the camera is. Demonstrating this in our world, so here we can see there's a bunch of layers being shown. And if I were to freeze the rendering right here and go down underneath, you can see that there's quite a few things missing from the actual environment that we have because it's only drawing what I can see from a particular angle. If I were to unfreeze it from this angle, everything will reappear again. And this is just something that Unreal Engine does automatically. But if it doesn't, I think you can change that by going to project settings, just doing a search for occlusion. It'll be this setting over here, you just need a ticket. And there's quite a few videos out there on how this works. I don't fully understand it myself and I had to watch a few videos and read a few articles, but it's certainly worth learning when you want to deal with visual performance issues. So the final bit in phase three was to be able to randomize the actual chunk generation and the block generation. So I created a, a special in would just to be able to control that at the top level here. But it does the same thing. It switches on the block index usage for randomizing the spawn. When you run it, this is what you get. You can see there's the point of origin in the middle there. So I'm going to change this into walking mode and see if I can make my way there. And because there's less blocks being spawned, it does take less time for it to generate and less chugging in terms of performance. But yeah, that's the end of phase three. So now I have a world that I can actually run around in. So thanks for watching guys. And if you liked it, smash like, hit subscribe, now I'll see you guys in the next video. Rush code out.